Okay, welcome to session three of Dewey Decimal Classification. I'm glad that you all are sticking with it. I know it's a lot to take in at first when you wrap your head around Dewey, but I think that you all are doing well on your assignments and learning a lot. Again, just like last week, we will go over the new material first for the first hour and then spend the last half hour of the class talking about the assignment. So here's what we're going to cover today. We are talking about a little last bit of Table 1. We started that last week, and we're going to talk about the 09 subdivision and how it's used with Table 2 and the 900 class. And then we'll talk about Table 3, which is only used with the 800 class, and then Table 4, which is only used with the 400 class. Just as a reminder, we started talking about the standard subdivisions yesterday, or last week, I'm sorry. Um, they are optional, but they are a way to further subdivide topics, and they're recommended for a large number of items because it helps browsing, it helps your patrons find what they need. Just to review the tables, we talked about Table 1 last week, and we'll talk about it a tiny bit more today, and as well as tables 2, 3, and 4. Table 1 is the standard subdivisions. Table 2 is for geographic areas and persons. Table 3 is for subdivisions for literature. And Table 4 is for languages. Okay, so here's Table 1 again, the type of things that are covered in Table 1. They subdivide by things like format, approach, people, location, and biographical content. And those last ones are the ones we're going to talk about today. The 09 subdivision is for geographical areas and persons. And Table 2, you'll remember, is for geographic areas and persons. And it can only be used in conjunction with Table 1. The 09 subdivision has to be added before you can add a subdivision from Table 2. And there are a few rules just like with the rest of the standard subdivisions, when you can use these, the subdivision of 09 plus something from Table 2, you can use it any time except when the schedules forbid it, when the topic of the book is only part of the number, if something in the schedule says there's a restriction, or if it would be redundant. Here is Table 1. You can see that 09 is the standard subdivision for historical, geographic, and persons treatment. And if you click further on that 09, you can see it's broken down more specifically, just like the other standard subdivisions that you started looking at last week. And it can keep getting even more specific than this. For example, that 093 to 099 range can be broken down even to the level of specific towns in some cases. Those are the geographic subdivisions. I also should mention that if you're dealing with a general historical treatment of a topic that deals with the history of something not limited by subdivisions, then you want to use the subdivision 09 without any further subdivision. And so you'll notice that 091 is the subdivision for areas, regions, places in general. 092 is for persons. And you can put biographies here. Let me go back to that slide a second. Um, a lot of libraries, you know, will just sort of have a separate section for biographies, maybe put a B in front of it and then arrange it by person's name. But you can put Dewey, put biographies in Dewey numbers if you want to. And you might use the 092 subdivision to do that. If you scroll down to this table here, or this section of notes on this page, it tells you three different options, A, B, or C, for classing biographies. We're not going to go into that too much detail about that, and there won't be any questions about that on your assignment. There's also more complete instructions in the manual. If you remember, in the print version, the manual is near the front, and it's also available on WebDewey, as you can see here. And it has 
instructions on different ways of dealing with biographies. So if you're interested in doing that, this is the way you would look. So going back to Table 1 and the 09 subdivisions, you'll see that for 093 through 099 is treatment by specific countries, localities, extraterrestrial worlds are also located here. If you're talking about a different planet, it goes here. And you'll see that for all of these, these instructions tell you not just to add the subdivision, but then to add to the base number numbers from Table 2. So let's go back to our tables again. We're going to start talking about Table 2. Here is Table 2. You'll see that some of these subdivisions look familiar from the 09 subdivision in Table 1. We have areas, regions, places in general, persons, and specific continents, countries, localities. So if you click on that areas, regions, places in general, it can be broken down further. And this one deals more with natural divisions, climate zones, landforms, things like that. Countries do not go in this subdivision. Outer space also goes here. Notice that 1-9 is for space. And they can be broken down even further. You can see that there are subdivisions under zonal, physiographic, and socioeconomic regions. And there are also some subdivisions under other kinds of terrestrial regions for hemispheres and oceans and sea basins. And then, just like we saw with 092 in Table 1, the subdivision 2 here is for persons. And this is as far as you can go in a bridge Dewey. In full Dewey, there are further subdivisions under this area, but this is it for a bridge Dewey, what we're working with here. And then the third option in Table 2 is for specific continents, countries, and things like that, sort of more political and man-made divisions rather than the natural ones we saw earlier. You can see that it's divided between the ancient world and the modern world. So for example, if you're talking about the ancient world, ancient China goes at 3-1. However, if you're talking about the modern world, China is in 5-1. which is a further subdivision under Asia here. Now, just like when we talked about the rest of the standard subdivisions last week, there are some variations on adding the 09s and then Table 2 numbers. Most of them are the same, a matter of dropping zeros or retaining zeros. And they're just like we talked about last week. The instructions in the schedule will tell you when to do that. And I think most of you caught on to that from your assignments. I think you were doing a pretty good job of looking for those notes on those variations. So we won't go into a whole lot of detail about those. Um, the last one is different. There are also occasions when you can drop the lead zero and the nine, but it still is the same sort of situation. The directions in the schedule will tell you when to do it. So it's still the same skill that you were learning last week. Let's look at some examples of using the 09 subdivision and the Table 2 numbers. Let's say we have a book called Trends in Nursing History. Now this is not limited to a particular time period or a particular area, it's just sort of a history of nursing in general. And so we would browse for nursing in the relative index and find that the base number is 610.73. Notice there is a note that says that standard subdivisions are allowed. So let's, we'll take a moment and write down our base number that we're going to start with 610.73.
And since this is a general historical treatment, we only need to add 09 without consulting Table 2 for further subdivision. We go to Table 1, we see that 09 is for historical treatments, and we add that to our number. So our full number is 610.7309. Are there any questions about that example? Okay, we'll go on to a little bit more complicated example. Let's say we have a book called Little School on the Prairie. It's about one-room schools in the Great Plains. And we'll look up schools in the relative index. There's no heading just for one-room schools, so we'll class this book with schools and their activities at 371. Now notice there's a pattern given for standard subdivisions. That's a variation. We've got some extra zeros in here. We have 001 and 002 and so on. So historical and geographical treatment is at 009. So we're going to write that down as our base number. 371.009. Now we do need to subdivide this geographically because we're talking about the Great Plains. So let's go back to Table 2 and look at the subdivisions for the modern world, which are subdivisions 4 through 9. We're talking about the Great Plains, so we want to look at North America, which is 7. And we click on that, it gets broken down further. Canada, United States, etc. So we would click on United States, 7-3. And now we're in the area of looking at specific states of the United States. And you might not necessarily know which of these categories the Great Plains fits in. And so you could click through all of them to read the notes. And if you had the print version, it would definitely be easier to browse, because each of them, I'm sure, has different states listed underneath them. But if you didn't want to go through all of these, you could also search for Great Plains in the relative index. This is something we haven't really showed an example of before, but the numbers from the tables also show up in the relative index. So if you get Great Plains, you'll see this number here. The T2 in front of it means that it's going to take you to Table 2 if you click on that link. And so when you click through to that, you'll see the Western United States is the subdivision you're taken to. But it, there is a note telling you that the Great Plains is classed here. So we would go with 7.8 for our subdivision, add that on to the base number we had, which was 371.009. So our full number is 371.00978. Any questions about that example? Okay, let's go on to another example that will show us one of the exceptions you might encounter when the schedules tell you to do something a little bit different than the usual pattern. Say we have a book about Soviet Union spycraft, and it's an encyclopedia. So we'll look it up in the relative index and decide that this goes with espionage and subversion. So the number for that is 327.12. We'll go ahead and write that down to keep track of our base number. Now notice there's a note here that says that standard subdivisions are used. And some of them, the geographic location ones, have already been built for us. They're showing us here. They've added 093 plus to 099 to some of these numbers. But if we click on that link, it tells us to not use these numbers and directs us instead to 327.123 through 327.129.
And what's happening is basically in these numbers, the 09 has been dropped. This is a case of the last variation on that list. And the schedules tell you to drop the 09 and just add the table 2 numbers directly to this space number. And in this case, the numbers have been built for you, so you don't have to think too much about this. You just follow the directions. But that's the reasoning behind it. According to the instructions, you add the numbers from table 2 directly to the base number. These instructions here are explaining what happened when these numbers were built. Also notice this is a case in which you can add more subdivisions. It says add further as follows, and standard subdivisions are included. So this is one of the cases in which you can add more than one subdivision. And in this case, since we have an encyclopedia, we are going to want to add a standard subdivision for the form to tell people that this is an encyclopedia, but we'll get back to that in a second. So according to Table 2, the correct subdivision is 47 for Russia. And so we add that directly onto the number without the 09. So 327.1247 is our number. Now we want to go back and add our subdivision to indicate that it's an encyclopedia. And this is what we worked with last week in Table 1. And 03 is the standard subdivision for an encyclopedia. And we have to remember, I don't think I mentioned this when we were looking at this screen before, but there is a pattern for the standard subdivisions that they have an extra zero. You can see some of these examples, there's a lot of things to keep track of and it takes some getting used to. And so our full number is 327.1247003. Any questions about that example? Okay, we'll go on to another example. We have a book called A Guide to Hostels in Spain. And if we look up hostels in the relative index, we're directed to temporary housing, lodging. And that takes us to 910. And normally, hostels are classed here at 910.46. But there is a note here that tells you to class these topics for specific continents, countries, and localities in 913 to 919, plus notation 06 from a table. Sure. I see I have a question coming in asking to back up a couple of screens. Sure thing. Which one are you particularly interested in? Espionage, okay. Do you want me to go through that whole example again? That was a pretty complicated one. There was a lot to take in with that one, I know. Let's see. Why did it take the top division? Let's see. Make it a bit more, okay. Let me know when I get to the correct screen that you're talking about, Carla. Do you mean this screen, the specific continents versus the by specific nations? Okay, that's a good question. I may have to review my thinking on this when I was creating this example.
Okay, that's a very good question. Um, I suppose, you know, just looking at this list, it might be hard to tell which one you should use. And the way I would interpret the difference between the two of these divisions would be that the top one with the 093 to 099 talks about espionage that takes place in a specific country, whether it is done by that country or not. You know, it could talk about spies from the United States doing their work in the Soviet Union, whereas the second one, I would say, talks about just the Soviet Union themselves doing spy work. And in this case, it ends up being kind of a moot point, because if you'll notice, I took this top subdivision mainly because it was just what I was used to seeing as the geographic subdivision, I think. And when you click on that, it tells you to go to the not to use that one and to use the 123 through 129. If we go back to that original screen, that's the same category here. And so basically, either one of those we'll choose will direct us back to that set of subdivisions rather than the original one that I chose. But I guess my thinking behind that one was that's the usual pattern for geographical subdivisions, so I was going to start there, and then it directed me to the right one. I hope that helps. Yeah, and that was a lot to take in at first. Cool. Okay. Any other questions on that particular one? Okay, great. Let's go back to our hostels in, in Spain example. Let's see here. Okay, so normally you would class hostels in 910.46, but when we're dealing with specific continents or countries, we want to go to that range of numbers from 913 to 919, and then it tells us to add 06. So there is a note here about Table 2 that tells you how these numbers were built. Basically, they're already built for you in this range of numbers, but it tells you that if you add to base number 91, and then the number from Table 2. So we're going to be looking at Europe, since we're talking about Spain. And notice there is a table at the bottom of the screen for adding subdivisions. And this is where that 06 comes from, so we're going to have to keep that in mind to add that later. That's for work specifically about facilities for travelers. So we know we're going to start with 9-1, because that's what the directions told us to do. And the numbers are already built for us, but we're going to go through Table 2 anyway, just to see the process. When we go to Table 2, 4-6 is the subdivision for Spain, so we're going to add that to the 9-1. You'll notice when you're working with numbers in the 900s, you're adding these table ones, these table numbers, two sort of incomplete numbers. We're used to kind of adding them after the decimal point, but these are going to be added before the decimal point. And so we started with 9-1, so we add the 4-6 for Spain, and we get 914.6. And then we go back and add the 06 for facilities for travelers. And so our full number is 914.606. And so we sort of made the leap here in this example to talking about the 900 class of numbers, which is for general geographical or historical treatments of a country. They all go in the 900 classes. So let's do another example of that one. Let's say we have a book called Decades of Change, The History of Ghana, 1960 to 2000. And if we look up Ghana in the relative index, you can see that sometimes specific time periods for countries are used. And so this is about the 20th century, so we want to go to that 966.7.
And there's a further subdivision for 1957 to the present. And there's no further subdivisions below that, so we know that 966.705 is the number that we want to use here because that covers our time period. Okay, so that covers historical and geographical treatments in general. Does anybody have any questions about that or about Table 2? Because we're going to switch gears a little bit here and go on to Table 3. Okay, Table 3 can only be used with the 800 literature class, You're, whereas Table 1 and Table 2 you could pretty much use with any class. This is only be used when you're working with numbers from the 800s. Subdivisions are added as instructed in the schedules and in the table itself. A lot of times the numbers will kind of be built for you, but we'll still go through kind of the process just so you have an idea of where these come from and know how to apply Table 3. Here is the screen for the 800 class. You'll notice that works of literature can be classed here. Works of fiction can be assigned Dewey numbers if you want to, although most libraries choose not to use them and they just alphabetize them by author's name. So works about literature are generally what are classed here in a lot of libraries. And in the general 800 class, basically for general works about lots of kinds of literature, the standard subdivisions are basically added. You can see that the zero is dropped and all of these should look familiar as the standard subdivisions that you encountered in Table 1. The other option that you'll see probably more often is 810 through 890 and these are for literatures of specific languages. And in this case literature is classed by the language in which it was originally written. And you'll see here that American literature in English and English literature in English, is, they are two separate categories. American literature and English literature are separate even though they technically have the same language. And so you choose the base number based on a language. You'll see that kind of those zeros are grayed out. Most of the time you will use the first two digits, the 81 for American literature or the 82 for English literature, and then add a third digit that tells you what form you're talking about. And there's a number of instructions here down at the bottom telling you how to choose the language. And remember, it's the language in which it is originally written, even if it's translated into another language. Once you have the base number from the 800s, you can add the numbers from Table 3 to more accurately describe your item. Usually the subdivisions that you'll use are the 1 through 8 for specific forms. They can tell if you're talking about poetry or drama or fiction in a specific language. And there's a number of instructions here, so you might want to make a point to read those because they will help you a lot when you're working with Table 3. So here are those subdivisions for specific forms found in subdivisions 1 through 9. Notice that there's a table of preference at the bottom, like you've seen on some other tables, and so if you have a work with two or more forms, use the table of preference to determine which one you go with. There's also a table telling you how to use standard subdivisions after these form subdivisions, and you can use them when you're instructed to in the, t in the schedules. Here's the rest of the table. And something you want to keep in mind is that the manual will tell you how to determine the author's language and national affiliation, which will, of course, be useful in determining your base number. So remember that the manual is there as a resource. The 800 numbers for a bridge Dewey are pretty simple. The process is shortened a lot from what it is in the full Dewey. You basically work off of determining what the language is and determining what the form is, and that's it. There's a few different options that we're going to cover. These 
are the ones, the options for a book with a single author. You can have one author writing in one language and in one form, one author writing in one language and multiple forms, an author writing in more than one language, and then the author who changed citizenship. And we'll talk about all these in more detail. This is just an overview. And there's also various options for book with multiple authors based on the language and the form that they're writing in. So let's start with the options for one author. If an author is writing in one language and in one form, it's pretty much the simplest option you'll have to deal with. First of all, determine the language in which the author wrote. Find the applicable base number in the schedules. And remember that in the case of the English language, you'll choose 81 if it's American and 82 if it's from England. So after you've got your base number, determine the form of the work, whether it's poetry or plays or fiction, and find the last the form number to add from table 3. Most of the languages already have the numbers built in the schedules, so I want you to understand where they come from in table 3, but you won't have to build the numbers yourself most of the time. You'll be able to look it up and see that 813 is, I believe, poetry from America. There's one exception. William Shakespeare has his own number, so anything about him or by him goes at 822.3. So let's start with an example. This will make a lot more sense when we work through an example. Let's say we have a book called From the Center of the Earth to the Moon, Travels with Jules Verne. And it's a critique of Jules Verne's works. Now, this may take a little bit of research if you're not as familiar with Jules Verne, but he is a French author. His books were originally written in French. And... So we are going to go with 84 as our base number. And if you click through on the 840, you'll see that, like I said, the numbers have been built for you. 843 is for French fiction. You can see that here. So we chose 84 for our base number, and now we're adding 3 for fiction which I guess I was wrong in my example before. Three is for fiction. One would be the subdivision for poetry. Now the note says that the number was built according to the instructions for table three. So if you want to, you can go to table three to make sure you're verifying doing this correctly. So again, and there's instructions. If you go up one level in the 800s, it tells you to add to base number 841 the number from table 3. If we click through to table 3, we'll see that, yes, 3 is the number to add for fiction, so that is where that 843 number came from, even though it was already built for you. So th this book, because it is about French fiction, goes in 843. One thing that you should want to remember about Dewey numbers is that works about an author and works by an author are both classed together at the same number. That is, if you're using Dewey to class your fiction works, which, like I said, not everybody does. Actually, a lot of people don't. So if you had the novel itself, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, the novel by Jules Verne, you would class that at French fiction in 843 if you chose to class your fiction in Dewey. And if you also had a biography of Jules Verne, our second example there, it's about the author, so it would also go at 843, because it's about a person who wrote French fiction. Okay, so it gets a little bit more complicated when you look at a book about, by or about one author, writing in one language, but containing multiple forms. But it's still the basic overall process. The first step is to determine the language and find the base number. And the second step is to ter determine the form. And in this case, you have to choose. So you go with the form the author is chiefly known for. And then you add that number to the form. So it's kind of just doing a little bit of research on your author and choosing the form that they usually wrote in. So if you have a book of both plays and poems by an author, but you know that he usually wrote poetry, then you class it with poetry.
And it's sort of the same thing as you have more than one language. And the rule of thumb there is that you use the language used last by the author. If they used to write in French and now they write in English, you would class it with English. Unless that particular book that you have is mostly in French, then you could put it with the French language works. And then you follow the step two for determining form. If it's only one form, you obviously class it with that form. And if it's more than one, you go with the form for which the author is mostly known. And then in the case of authors who write in English, you might sometimes have to deal with an author who changed their citizenship. They were born in America but became a British citizen. And the rule for that is to use the number for the author's adopted citizenship. So in that case, you would go with English as written in England. And then choose the form based the same way you would with the other examples. Are there any questions about dealing with a work by or about one author. And I think the questions on your assignment dealing with the 800s are just one author works, but we're still going to cover the multiple author because you will see those occasionally. And it's still the same basic steps. You determine the language, and then you determine the form. And the third step in here is that you determine if the contents are limited by a time period or a specific genre, and if so, you're done. And this is another example where it's a lot more long and drawn out in the full Dewey, but it's really pretty simplified in a bridge Dewey. So let's use an example here. Nebraska's Homefront in Rhyme, a collection of World War II poetry by multiple Nebraska poets. And since it's in Nebraska, it's going to be American literature in English, so our base number is going to be 8-1. And then it's poetry, so it's going to be American poetry in English, 8-11. And there are no further instructions under here, but it does tell you the number is built according to Table 3. In this case, it's about World War II poetry, so it is limited to a specific time period, so we are done. And the reason we stop here is because there are time period numbers for time periods in the full version of Dewey, but not in a bridge Dewey. And if the time period is not limited, if it was Nebraska poetry throughout the full history of Nebraska, then we might use subdivisions to further divide the numbers. There's an 08 subdivision for collections or any of the standard subdivisions would work as well, but we're not going to touch on that too much. Since I think most books you'll see will be limited by a time period. So let's say we have a book by or about multiple authors, and it's not all poetry, it's multiple forms. It's the same thing. You determine the language or literature, and in most cases you'll probably use the base number, 810. It's the one that applies to all forms of literature. It's not limited to just poetry or just fiction. And then again, you determine if the contents are limited by a time period or a specific genre. And if so, you're done. And then if you have multiple authors in two languages, you look at both of the languages and use the one coming first in the schedule. It's kind of the first of two rule here. Then determine the form and find the appropriate number in Table 3, just like we've done with the other examples. And again, if it's limited by a specific time period or genre, you're done. Now it gets a little bit more complicated when you have more than two languages. And there are specific numbers for these in the schedules at 808.8, .8 are collections of literary texts from more than two literatures. And so you determine the form and then add the form number to the 808 number. Let's look at an example of that. If you click on 808.81 through 808.88, you'll see that these numbers are built for you already, so you don't really have to worry about that. You just have to remember that the 808 numbers are where you come if you have more than two languages. And instructions on these numbers and how they were built are given in the notes.
And if you go to Table 3, instructions on building these 808 numbers will also be given there. And the subdivision tells you that these that's used for works by more than one author. Just as a quick aside, this is um, 09 is the subdivision used for more than one author. So that's you know way more complicated than you're probably going to be getting usually. But to see what you're missing out on if you don't use full Dewey and how complicated it could possibly get, there's a formula for building 800 numbers in the full Dewey, which is 8 plus the number for the language and literature, plus a number for the form, plus a number for the time period. Then they have a category called feature, theme, or persons, plus the geographical area. So here's an example. We have a book about Austrian plays written by women. You would start out with the base number of 83 for literatures of Germanic languages, add a 2 for drama, add 914 for the time period, 08 to indicate that it's in an anthology, and then 09287 to indicate that they're women authors, and 09436 to indicate the specific area of Austria Liechtenstein. So there's a really, really long number there at the bottom that you could use if you wanted to use the full capacity of full Dewey. But in a bridge Dewey, you cast it at 832, because it is Austrian language, German language from Austria, plus 2 for drama, plays. Subdivision 08 cannot be added to define the collection, because the works are from a limited time period. So in a bridge Dewey, you stop at 832. It's a lot simpler. Let's see, I see we have a question. <laughs> Yay, abridged! Yes, I agree. <laughs> okay, any other questions about Table 3 and working with literature before we go on to Table 4? I see Barbara has a hand raised. Let me go ahead and unmute you. Barb, did you have a question? Yeah, could you just uh, go back over that formula one more time? The one from the full Dewey? Mm hmm Okay, sure. Well, no, the, the 8 plus language. Yes, and this yeah. is something that you do not need to worry about if you're working with a bridge Dewey. This was just an example of how you would use full Dewey. And okay. so it, it has subdivisions for language or literature, and then a subdivision for form, and then a subdivision for time period, and then feature themes or persons, and then you divide it geographically. And if you're working with a bridge Dewey, you won't ever need to worry about this. And even if you're using full Dewey, you probably won't need to subdivide your collection that thoroughly. But the option's there. You could if you wanted to, and you'd end up with your Thank really, you. really long number. Sure. I have a question asking, do many libraries use full Dewey? And I don't know that I have a definitive answer for you off the top of my head. It seems, you know, even if they use full Dewey, they probably don't always use all of the subdivisions to that extent. It's, as Carla has remarked in the comments, you would need bigger stickers, and that's exactly right. Probably nobody has a room on their labels to put a number that long. I guess basically the advantage of using full Dewey is that it gives you the option. If you do happen to have a particular area of your collection that you have a lot of items and you really want somebody to be able to browse, then you might want to have the functionality to use all those subdivisions. But you're right, with numbers that long, they would never be put away right. It would be hard to read the correct order on those stickers, that's for sure. And so. As I think I mentioned before, the general rule of thumb is that if you have more than 20,000 nonfiction items in your collection, you would might want to consider using full Dewey. But even if you use full Dewey, you don't have to always use the subdivisions to their full extent. It's really just a matter of personal preference on what works best in your library. Okay, let's go on to Table 4. 
And just like table 3 was used only with numbers from the 800s, table 4 is used only with numbers from the 400s. And these are when you're talking about books about a particular language, about learning a language, things like grammar, things like dictionaries, alphabet books, things like that. The subdivisions are added as instructed in the schedules in the table, just like all the other tables. There's a little bit different pattern here for the 03 dictionary subdivision. In this, in the 400s, the subdivision 3 takes the place of the 03, so a Webster's Dictionary would be at 423, not 420.3. The zero is dropped, and the dictionary becomes part of the number before the decimal point. Just a little bit of a distinction, there's a subdivision 5 for grammar, but that's used for linguists and people who study the language professionally, whereas the subdivision 8 is standard usage of the language, and it's used for people learning the rules of grammar. Here is the 400 class. You'll see that there's 410 is for linguistics, but you'll probably spend most of your time in the 420 through 490, which deals with the rules of specific languages. And you can see it's broken down into several different areas. Now, there is no division between American and other English the way there is in literature. English is all considered to be one language. Here is table 4. You'll see the various types of subdivision for languages. The ones you'll probably use most often are 1 through 5. These deal with the standard form of the language, grammar, dictionaries, writing systems. So if you have a book about alphabets, it would go under writing systems. Let's look at an example. We have a book about translating cowboy expressions. And it doesn't necessarily say it from the title, but we'll, I'll tell you that it's you know American cowboy. It's English language expressions. So the book is about English, so we're going to use the base number 42. And these numbers have been built for you, so you can say that we're going to go with 427 for the historical and geographic variations because this is slang from a particular time period. It's probably the American West, so it's also a particular geographic location. And so if we were just looking through the options and we wanted to just look at the numbers that are already built, we could probably be fairly certain that 427 is our number. But if we wanted to make sure, we could build the number ourselves using Table 4. And we'll also see that the subdivision 7 includes slang, which is what this book is about. So if there, we were unsure up to this point, this is, would tell us for sure to use the number 427 for this one. And you'll see again that even though the numbers have been built for you under the 400s, it does tell you how they're built from Table 4. So we would go ahead and put it with 427. Here's another example really quick. We have a book called El Alfabeto, which gives illustrated sentences for the letters of the Spanish alphabet. So this time we know that 46 is our base number for Spanish and Portuguese languages. And if we go into the subdivisions, we'll see that 461 is for writing system, which includes alphabets. And it tells you that the number was built according to the instructions there. And the note on this screen, if we click through there, tells it that the number came from Table 4, as we could probably assume. And if you go to Table 4, you have to know that standard form of language, 1 through 5, is what you're looking for. But once you click on there and you get to writing systems, you'll see that this is where the word alphabet itself is actually used. So the numbers have been built for you, and you can take their word for it. But if you want to verify that you're using the right number, you can always go to Table 4 and look for yourself.
So we would put it with 461 for Spanish language alphabets. Are there any questions about Table 4 and the 400s? Okay, there is one more assignment. We won't have a class session ne next week to go over it, since this obviously, since this is our last class session, but I will go over it and give you feedback on it and send it back to you individually. And if you are doing this class for CE credit, it is required to do the assignments. So again, this is up at the class website at the same address for the last two sessions. And it's due by 10 o'clock next Tuesday, the 29th. So if there are no further questions on the new material, then we will go ahead and go over the assignment for this week. Get into our web Dewey here. Okay, our first one was the adding to your family through adoption. And so I browsed for adoption in the relative index. And it says that it it's kind of talks about a couple different disciplines here. It has practice of, a dis, of adoption, adopting from foreign countries, and laws relating to adoption. And so this gets to practice with looking for interdisciplinary numbers in the schedules. Now you'll see there's a couple of different options for adoption here, but remember we learned last week that if you have ones with subdivisions and one without, the heading without a subdivision, the number next to that is the interdisciplinary number. So we would go ahead and use 362.734 for this answer. The next item was canned foods, and the little note there says that it discusses both home food preservation and commercial food processing. And I started by just searching for the title itself, browsing in the relative index. And there is no match for canned foods, but the nice thing about browsing is that you can see similar topics nearby, and so I looked for canning foods. And you'll see there are options for both of our topics that we talk about in this book, commercial preservation and home preservation, but there is also an interdisciplinary number, 664. And so that's probably going to be the one we use, but we we'll want to click through and check on the notes anyway. We'll see that interdisciplinary works on food preservation are included there at 664. Now it does say home preservation would go here, and that was one of our options, but again there's a note that directs us to class interdisciplinary works on food preservation in 664, so that's the number we'd go with. And I know some people chose uh, the interdisciplinary number for food in general, and but we can be a little bit more specific here. Food preservation is the topic that we're going for, so that's why we went with 664. The third one was, you can be as photogenic as a model, healthy diet and exercise for teenage girls. And I believe I looked for exercise in the relative index. Let's see. Yes, and 613.7 was given as the number for exercise without any subdivisions, so you could reasonably expect that it's an interdisciplinary number. And there is a note here that says to class comprehensive works on diet and physical fitness. 
So that's what I was working off of to choose this number. Now you'll see that you are directed to 613.2 for works that are just about diet. And if you had looked that up initially, you would probably be directed back to 613.7 by, it says works on diet, exercise, and physical fitness in 613.7. So that is what I chose to go with for this question. The next one was Dictionary of Child Psychology. And I looked for child psychology in the relative index and was directed to 155.4. And this got into the question of knowing when to add a standard subdivision for a form. If it had just been a general book about child psychology, we could stop with 155.4. But we, because it's a dictionary, we can choose to add the standard subdivision for dictionaries. And if you remember that, that's a Table 1 standard subdivision. You can go directly to Table 1 and see that Dictionaries, Encyclopedias, and Concordances is 03. So we would go with 155.403. There's no pattern telling us to do differently, to add or drop a 0 or anything, so we just add the 03 on. And again, if you didn't remember exactly which table the standard subdivision for dictionary was. You can look that up in the relative index. And dictionaries for specific subjects are put with table 1 and the standard subdivision 03 again. Takes us right back there. So you don't have to have these tables memorized or anything, but you just kind of have to have a general sense of when it might be appropriate to use a standard subdivision. You can always look up the subdivisions in the relative index. And the next item was a love of language, which talks about possible careers in linguistics. And so I looked up linguistics. and was directed to 410. And I think most of you got here. And you'll see that standard subdivisions can be used, but you do want to notice there's a pattern that you drop the zero. Instead of 410.03, it's or 410.02, it's just 410.2. And then it seemed like some people might have had a problem finding out which standard subdivision to use to discuss that, the fact that we're talking about careers. And you, this is you know, something that's maybe a lesser known subdivision and it might not even be clear to you immediately that it is found in Table 1. So what I did was I browsed in careers in the relative index and there wasn't a match but a nearby term of career opportunities directed me to vocational guidance. and which directed me to Table 1 for to add 023. And you'll see that this talks about the subject as a profession, and that's what we're talking about here. We're not just talking about linguistics, we're talking about linguistics as a profession. So that's why I chose to add this standard subdivision. Now, I think a few of you had added 71 for vocational education which might be a possibility, and again, it depends on the book itself. It's hard to tell from just the title, but if your book talked about specific education that someone would need in order to become a, a linguist, then 0.73 might be a potential subdivision for this one as well. But the main thing to remember with this one is just that there is a pattern that tells you to drop the zero, so it's not 410.023, it's 410.23. Okay, the last one was a little bit tricky. The Women Welders in the United States, a directory. And I started by looking up welding 
in the standards in the relative index and got a base number of 671.5. Oh, I see I have a question. The question didn't this one say something about not using 0.23. Let me go check that. I don't remember seeing a note to that effect, but I can double check. We were in 410 for linguists. Yes, it has 0.3 for 0.9 for the standard subdivisions, but and again, this is kind of a quirk of reading Web Dewey that you have to get used to. It does have the miscellaneous standard subdivisions. Let's see here. And let's see. I believe that what we're getting at here is, let's see, was this the note you were referring to, Carla, when it tells you not to use point two for miscellaneous language and languages? The screen before, okay. Was there a note on here that you were reading? See, the fact that it says standard subdivisions next to 0.3 to 0.9 doesn't mean that you can't use 0.1 and 0.2. They're just kind of broken out into separate categories here. And this is something that it's a quirk of Web Dewey. You have to get used to instead of having all of the standard subdivisions written out when there's a change in the pattern, like in this case when it's telling you to drop the zero, they sometimes break out the first couple of standard subdivisions and then lump the rest of them together. And if you click on miscellany, Okay, so uh, the question is, if you click on miscellany, there's no further subdivision, so where do you get the three? And this is, again, sort of having to be familiar with the table one and the standard subdivisions and realizing that even if they're not all spelled out, you can go into table one and get the rest of the subdivisions. So table three, it's perfectly acceptable to use a point two three in this case. Great. And it, yeah, it is just a matter of getting used to navigating Web Dewey and understanding how it works. Any other questions on that example? Okay, well, we'll go to the last item about women welders. And I looked up welding and got 671.5. Now there are a number of different subdivisions you could use here. You could class it with the subdivision for directories because it is a directory. You could class it with the subdivision for classes of persons because women is a class of persons. And you might also be considering using United States, a geographical subdivision. So let's go to table one and take a look at the various options. And we would see that directories of persons and organizations goes in 025. Of course, the historical geographic and persons treatment is in 09. And women would go in 092. And it could be geographical. Again, there's 093 through 099 are the treatment by specific continents, countries, and localities. So if you remember last week, we talked about this table of preference down here that tells you 
how to choose between subdivisions because you can usually only use one. You can't add something for all of them. And so the closer they are to the top, the ones you should use, let's see. So directories of persons and organizations are here. So it is closer to the top, 025 versus the 09 down here for the United States. And so my answer for this was 671.5025. Now I saw that a number, a few people had classed this in 331 for, I think they got here by looking for approaching this for welding as, welders as people, I think. Let me see. Let me go to the main classes and see what 331 was. I think that perhaps people had come in for looking for labor by industry and occupation. We're talking about welding as an industry, and so they went to 331.7. But it, they, there is a note that tells you to see the industry or occupation itself. And so we are looking for welding as a topic instead of 331.7. Does anybody have a question about that? Okay, well, if there aren't any other questions, then the assignment due next week will be up on the class website as well as the recording of this session. It should both be up by the end of the day. The assignment is due next Tuesday, but there will not be any more in-person sessions. So thank you all for participating in the class. And if you have any questions about the class or about anything Dewey or cataloging related in the future, don't hesitate to contact me. I see we have one more question. Oh. Well, thank you for joining me. And I hope to interact with you all in the future.